Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 32. Hey, we're in the workbook Business Math Chapter 3. If you want to download this workbook, go to my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we got to talk about mark down, mark up and mark down. Basically, this is just a different word for our increase, decrease, and our rate of change problems that we've been working on. Hey, let's read the problem here. The original price of a Lego set was 10 10 50. If the markdown was 10%, what was the reduced price? Well, let's just get busy listing our variables. Looks like original price, that has to be our begin point, right? And that will be equal to 1050. And it says if the markdown was 10%. Well, wait a second, what is markdown? Oh, that's the amount of change. We go down from the original price, zoop, down by 10%. So that really is our rate of change. We're just using slightly different terminology. Markdown. And what is that? Hey, they listed it here, markdown 10%, but I'm going to list it as a negative, minus 0.1. Now, I'm going to also show you this as a percent. right? As you're learning, it's helpful to do that. Control 1. Eventually, you don't have to do that. You can use either one, and, it, it's, uh, and you can do the problem no problem. Now, I'm also going to put this as the uh, begin or base, and this is the rate of change. Now, uh, do we have anything else? Oh, yeah, our goal, find reduce priced. And what formulas are we going to use? Well, you could go and draw a picture if you wanted, if you couldn't think of it to get it all organized. But I'm looking right here. This is markdown. I already know since we've done a bunch of these problems. This is a percent, right, or a decimal. And we can simply add this to the number 1 to get the rate. And this will work for either increase or decrease problems. We saw exactly this in both of the, in the last video when we did increase and decrease. So I'm actually going to put my formula here, rate equals 1. And this is a, a decrease problem, 1 minus our rate of change. Now wait a second. A lot of problems list the rate of change like they did here as a positive, but we have it listed as a negative. And why do we do that? Because sometimes the formulas we use to get to this will spit it out negative. And then we'll tell us, oh, yeah, this is a decrease problem. So if this is a case that it's entered as a, it ha listed as a negative, you can't put negative minus a negative because that will give us a positive. So you could use this formula to 1 plus and then if the rate of change is negative. So uh, 1 plus whatever the negative rate of change is. Now, maybe you can't think of what other formulas you have to use, but well, let's go down here and solve for this. And then maybe we'll have some ideas once we get that new bit of information. I'm going to get that formula right there. And here it is, equals 1. And let me just show you what happens when you do minus of a minus, right? Ooh, 1.1. Now watch this. I'm going to do a trick here. Copy that and then paste it right there. Why did that work? It brought the format and the formula because it was a relative cell reference. Now that's not right. So I'm going to click here and hit F2. What I really wanted was plus. Notice we have this plus, and then because the ROC has a negative, this will work. Then in essence, you're subtracting it. Oh, there we go. Oh. Hey, that's 0.9. And that makes sense because if we're reducing the price uh, from the original base, which is 100% or 1, if we're reducing it to some lower price, then the rate has to be less than 1. So that gives me the idea, oh yeah, I could just take this rate times the original uh, price, and that will give us the reduced price. Hey, I'm going to write that formula right here. That would be the uh, end value. And that could, um, ooh, that have a bend value. <laughs> the end value, which also could be a part, right? And that's going to equal to our whatever the beginning amount was, or that could be uh, a base. 
times our rate. I'll do it here too. I have an eight there because I forgot to hit shift. Boop. All right, and now we can come down here and solve. And I'm going to do our same little trick. Get that label and put it down here. Again, as we're learning this, we're being super careful to list all the details that we might gather before we even get to solving it. Later, you don't have to be so uh, careful. But uh, as you're learning, it definitely helps to be this careful. All right, let's do our formula. Equals, oh, our original amount times our rate. And ding, 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 we get our reduced price, $9.45. We better check this. There's always uh, at least a few ways. Check. What are we going to check? Uh, well, we could do a bunch of things. How about uh, this end? This is an associated part divided by this rate, which is the associated rate. And that'll give us our base. We can check it that way. So we'll go the begin value is going to equal to the end divided by the rate. Let's try it. The equal the end value divided by our rate. Ding, ding, ding. We got it. So it looks like we got it right. Now we can write our answer in words. The reduced price is $9.45. I'm going to rush out and get that for my kids. They love Legos. All right, now uh, that was a decrease or a markdown. Let's do a markup or a increase. The original price for the generator before the Seattle storm was 600 bucks. After the so storm, a 20% markup was added. Ooh, should you do that when you have a natural disaster like that and everyone's trying to buy the generators? Oh, OK, well. All right, 20% um, markup was added. What is the new price? Well, this is the same as the other one, except for going the other way up. So the original price, that'll be our begin. And what is that? That is going to be equal to 600 bucks. B E G. In essence, you know, I put it there and I put it there, but I'm just kind of repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh, is that how you get good at anything? That's it. Practice. You know what? 1% uh, of 1% of the people in the world are geniuses that don't have to practice a lot. The rest of us have to use the sledgehammer approach, right? Just practice, practice, practice. All right, what else do we have? Oh, mark up. And that's going to be what? Our rate of change. Oh, and it's 20%. I'm going to put 0.2. Then I'm going to do a little trick here. And then format it. All right, and we can do our same trick we did from our markdown. We can calculate the rate from this. So formula, oh, look, what's our goal? Our goal. Find new price. In our formula, just like once we know the rate of change, we can simply add it or subtract it to 1, and it will give us our rate. So formula number 1, rate equals, and in our case, it will be uh, 1 plus the rate of change. All right, so let's come down here and solve that equals 1 plus that. Hey, by the way, could we have also done this? Equals uh, the rate of change, or this one, whatever you want. By the way, in this case, if we want it formatted, if you click on that cell, it should suck the format plus 1, right? So can we do it that way? Is it OK? Yeah, because 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1. Now, uh, the similar logic to our last problem, once we have the rate and we want to calculate the end value or the part, we simply take the rate times our begin or base, and boom, we have the end amount. So I'm going to come up here and do our formula equals end, end amount. I'm just going to put end equals begin times rate which also equals from earlier studies base times rate. Again, what I, why am I doing all this? Just to smash it into my head with a sledgehammer that base and begin are the same terms. 
And not only that, why are there so many different terms in the working world and academic world? That's just the way it is. You got to get used to it. I wish there was some universal way everyone always agreed to just call it one thing, but that doesn't work that way. All right, so we're going to do our label right there, and then our calculation would be equals whatever the rate is times whatever the original price. Wow, 720 bucks. Well, uh, if you really wanted a generator, I guess you'd go out and um, pay for it. Hey, we can check it. Check one, and why don't we do uh, the same little trick again. We have an associated part, right? Even though it's bigger than the original one, it's still a part, times the associated rate. Divide those two things. So I'll go, shoop. the and the uh, begin amount, because we're checking, is going to equal to the n divided by rate, which also could be part divided by rate. All right, let's do it. Equals the part divided by the rate. I got my fingers crossed. I hit it. Oh, ding, ding, ding. There it is. So we, we checked it. We checked uh, these uh, calculated numbers together to see if we can get one of the original numbers. And when that happens, we're pretty darn sure we got it right. Now we can put the answer in words. The marked up price is $720. All right, so that's markup and markdown. When we uh, come back, we have one last uh, little example of rate of change for stocks. All right, see you then.